everyone. Good to see you all. We always do a little bit of an introduction while people are just joining us. I'm just keeping an eye on the numbers watching. Welcome to those just joining us. Can you let me know if there's any problems with the video feed, please? I'm just looking at it on mine and it's misbehaving a bit, which could just be my mobile internet for saving the Wi-Fi for the broadcast. So just let us know if there's any problems. It looks all right though, I think. We were just getting ready to set up and as we looked out the window, our parasol that we'd forgotten to put away blew past the window. So I've gone and brought that in. So we've all tidy trampolines down and uh, made sure that all those things that might get blown away are all right. Anyone got any delicate plants outside? It's a bit windy today, quite a change in the weather, but we should be used to that. That's Britain. Our weather just seems to do its own thing whenever we like. One minute, heat wave. Next minute, storms. <laughs> but there we are. Looks like it's working okay. I'm just looking at the feed from here. Now, during our prayers today, we're going to be lighting some candles, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully the lighter will work. If you have a candle at home, or some candles, if, even if you have four candles, you can go and get one if you'd like to. And then during the prayers, you might like to light the candle yourself as well as a symbol of our prayers and to help us to enter into that meditative time with God. So if you do have a candle, or more than one candle, and you'd like to go and get that, then just do that now. We'll let you just go and get those candles. And as always, uh, for these last few weeks anyway, during our prayers, if anyone has any requests for prayers, any person or a situation or a place that you'd like us to pray for specifically during our prayers, then please mention it in the comments if you can see them in the video and we'll try and include them in the prayers if we can. Do remember it's a public video so only share those things you're happy for anyone who could see the video to to know about in our prayers. <laughs> yes Brenda will be, I knew you'd get the four candles reference. <laughs> yeah, see someone appreciates my jokes. Um, anyway, I'll try not to make too many terrible jokes this morning. So we are at the third Sunday of Trinity now. Trinity is a very long season in the church, many, many more Sundays to go. And we're going to start with just a few words of welcome. We meet in the presence of God who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. Amen. Our first hymn today is called As the Deer Pants for the Water. Play this on the guitar. Try not to bash the television. And thank you for your hymn suggestions. Do please keep them coming in. We do like to try and keep these services as interactive as we can in the circumstances. I'm going to sing as the deer pants for the water. Thank you. 
time I sing that hymn, I'm reminded of the occasion, I think it was at St Oswald's, where we were singing this, and there was a slight unfortunate typo in one of the verses. I, I feel like it was a special service, perhaps the bishop was there, I might be conflating that with another, another typo on another time. Um, and instead of singing about gold and silver, we all found ourselves singing about how much we loved golfing. That was what we were singing about. We love God more than golf or silver. Hopefully that's true, but then I don't particularly like golf very much, so that's not really saying very much about my love for God. More than gold, I think, is, is better. Um, you can share in these some typos of uh, times past. I remember another occasion. I think this is with the bishop as well, actually. A bit of a theme here, uh, where instead of singing about being thine alone, we sang about being thin, oh, to be thin. And thin alone, instead of thine alone, we're all singing the Weight Watchers and the Slimming World hymn. So we love to laugh together as we worship God. We also love to pray together. And I'm going to lead us in our collect prayer, our special prayer for today. God, our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promise of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, Anthea is going to bring to us our first reading, which is from Romans chapter 6. Morning, everyone. Morning. <laughs> our first reading is taken from the book of Romans chapter 6, beginning to read at verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its wicked desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I'm using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever increase in wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Delighted to say that we're being joined today in worship by Dr Anne Whitfield, our lay minister, our reader, and she's going to read to us our gospel reading, which is recorded, and also share with us uh, a reflection, a few thoughts on the readings for today and the world in general. So this is Dr Anne, and I'm going to move our microphone, Oops. point it the right way, so that everyone can hear more clearly what Anne is saying, stay. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me 
welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Good morning everyone. It's lovely to be able to share my reflections with you today. As we emerge from lockdown, it is stirring up a lot of anxiety amongst many of us as we worry about our friends, our family, perhaps those who are more vulnerable than us. I don't know about you, but the first time I ventured into the post office, it felt like a very alien experience. I almost felt that I was doing something very wrong. And I'm sure many of you have experienced this. On the other hand, there are of course many people who are emerging from this state of suspended animation with great glee, as we saw with the huge numbers who descended on the beach at Bournemouth last week, and the many young people who are setting up raves and setting up various things to relieve their pent up feelings of frustration and anger at being cooped up and at having a lot of their ambitions for the future perhaps destroyed forever. The killing of George Floyd in America has stirred up a huge amount of anger and frustration at the inequalities and injustices that exist in this world. And we have seen this in this country in great measure. We saw it too last week when Peter Bloodworth showed us what had been happening in Wakefield, where at least 70 people a day are being fed because they have no other recourse to food or shelter. Tomorrow is the feast day of St. Peter and St. Paul. These are two men who followed Jesus to the bitter end. Both of them met rather sticky ends. Both of them were very ordinary people with failings. Peter denied Jesus three times and was always impetuous and being rebuked by Jesus for rushing into things perhaps without thought. St. Paul persecuted Christians until his conversion on the road to Damascus. But it's thanks to these two that we have Christianity and the teachings of Jesus today. As we saw last week, Jesus' message is not easy. If we commit to following him, we may have to quarrel with family, we may have to split off or upset those that we love or whose opinion we value. <clears throat> Today's teaching <coughs> to his disciples extends to the word welcome. And he tells us that welcoming God into our lives means that we extend a welcome to everyone. Two weeks ago, I went to the Methodist Zoom big worship and the theme was hope, hope for the future and we were asked to write down what things that we had learned during lockdown would we want to carry forward into the world of the future and I think the overwhelming message was please please let us continue to talk to one another to be community, to be aware of those who are in need, to love those 
that we encounter from day to day. This would be a great message for all our country and for the whole world if we could but carry it forward. But I think what we have to remember is that Christianity is an active religion and what that means is that we must seek out inequality, injustice and challenge it wherever we find it. And we must be ready to extend a welcome to everyone, not just friends and family, but to strangers in our midst. I wish you all well as you emerge from lockdown. Keep safe. Amen. Amen. Anthony is going to lead us in our prayers in a moment. We're going to light some candles in between our prayers and I'm going to sing a very simple chant from the Teze community, which is called My Peace I Leave You, My Peace I Give You. If you do have a candle, any number of candles, then you might like to light the candle while we say our prayers as you pray for, for someone who's dear to you or a situation that's, that's troubling you at the moment, or to give thanks to God for something that's good in your life at the moment. I'm just going to um, swap props for a moment as we prepare for this. Bed on props. So I hope you have a candle with you if you're able to do that wherever you are living at the moment. And so let us pray. Gracious God, we first of all pray for your world. We pray for those places which are marked by injustice, by oppression. And we pray for those people who today are suffering through those injustices and those oppressions. My peace I leave you, my peace I give you, trouble not your hearts, my peace I leave you. My peace I give you, be not afraid. We pray for our own communities, that we would carry forward with hope those things that we have learnt in lockdown, and that we would be places of welcome and hospitality. My peace I leave you, my peace I give you, trouble not your hearts, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, be not afraid. We pray for people in our own country and around the world who hold power, who have authority and who make decisions which affect our everyday lives. We pray that those decisions would be made with wisdom and with compassion. My peace I leave you, my peace I give you, 
peace I give you. Trouble not your hearts, my peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Be not afraid. We pray for ourselves for our own families, our loved ones, the places we visit and the people that we see and those places that we at the moment do not visit and do not see but carry with us. My peace I leave you, my peace I give you, trouble not your hearts, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, be not afraid. We pray for those known to us who are having a hard time, for those who are unwell, those who are struggling with lockdown and in particular we pray for Tom who has lost his job recently. My peace I leave you, my peace I give you, trouble not your hearts, my peace I leave you. My peace I give you, be not afraid. Remember those who have died. We give thanks for our own loved ones who have passed from us. And we remember at this time, especially those who have recently lost their loved ones and who are grieving at this time. My peace I leave you, my peace I give you, trouble not your hearts, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Conclude our prayers with the words of the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's show one another a sign of God's peace through our actions, through our words this week, and if you like, through the comments in our video as we say, peace be with you. I'm gonna move these candles before I set fire to myself. <laughs> All to my words. And we'll just move them just off camera. Peace be with all of you. Those of you who've just joined us, I can see a couple of people saying they've only just managed to join. 
the internet is often patchy at the moment, sadly. Uh, if you have just managed to join us, then you can always, if you wish, watch back the video. If you missed the beginning part, you can always watch the first part of our service afterwards. But that might feel a bit strange if you've joined us just now, so don't worry about it. We do always put our videos up on Facebook, saved on both church pages for St John's and St Oswald's. Also, we will shortly put them up on YouTube as well. There's a YouTube channel that we have for St Oswald's, but it's a joint one, really, for both churches. Uh, and if you search for St Oswald's Methley on YouTube, then you'll find the video there as well, as well as videos from previous weeks. Taffy, our dog, is just barking from my office where we've shut him in just to tell us that he agrees. And that's where you can find the videos if you know anyone who would, would like to share them and to worship with us at a later time. Other information, I am sure that you've all heard by now in the news that we can open up places of worship again from the 4th of July. Now, <laughs> our government, it's been proved over these last three months, likes to make these announcements but not have all of the detailed paperwork to go with it that's necessary, ready at the same time. Uh, it, obviously, there's a lot of work that goes into this and, and everything's being done at quite short notice. So I do understand in some way, but it would have been helpful if they'd had everything ready for, for churches, for other places of worship and for lots of other businesses that are affected by the reopening date as well. I'm telling you this because we, I can say for sure we won't be able to have a Sunday service uh, for St Oswald's or St John's in person in the church building on the 5th of July, which is the first Sunday, because we just won't be ready in time. We're still waiting for this information to come through. We don't yet know what's permitted for us to do when we meet together. and uh, We're not quite certain about the upper limit of numbers. We think it's likely that we will stick to 30 being the upper limit, uh, and that includes people from the same household in St Oswald's, We've measured the church building uh, and if we fully reopen all of the different seating areas, then if there's one person on their own, then we can fit 16, possibly 17, spread around the church two metres apart. And we are going to be keeping two metres apart as much as we can uh, because that is, that is safer. And in these early days of coming out of lockdown, it's better to be a little bit cautious and that might mean that we can stay out of lockdown. Uh, in St John's Church... Um, we are about to open St John's for private prayer. So St Oswald's is now open for private prayer on Sunday afternoons and Wednesday afternoons from 2 till 5 o'clock. That's St Oswald's in Methley, 2 till 5 o'clock. St John's for Alton and Woodlesford is going to be open for private prayer this Tuesday, 11 till 1, and then on Saturday, 11 till 1 as well. So St John's, 11 till 1, Tuesday and Saturday, St Oswald's in Methley, Wednesday and Sundays, 2 till 5. And this is still a little bit of a trial. These opening times might change, particularly if we have a request for a funeral, which means that we, we might want to leave the, uh, the church empty for a little bit longer afterwards uh, for cleaning and so on. Um, we don't quite know yet if we're allowed to reopen church halls. We don't quite know if we're going to be able to begin worship again for Woodlesford and Alton, which has been, as you know, for these last few years in the church hall, uh, or whether we might start with opening one building and then work towards opening the others. Lots of unknowns. We don't know if we're going to be allowed to sing. We don't know if we're going to be allowed to have communion. We, we think that will be allowed very soon, if, if not from next week, but only uh, receiving the bread and not the wine for quite a long time to come. Lots of unknowns, like I say, and this is the reason that I'm telling you that I know for sure we will not be having an in-person service in either church building or church hall on Sunday the 5th of July. We hope that soon after that we will be able to and we will put word out as quickly as we can through Facebook, uh, through our, our other platforms and through, uh, through letters as well, because obviously there are some people who don't receive these services online. We will be continuing these digital services. At some point we may change the time of them, but we know that they are important for lots of people who can't come physically to the church building. And for quite a long time to come, there may be lots of people who feel um, unsafe or it's not recommended for them to come and join groups together. So it may be that they may not be able to come in person. And we'll continue these online services as a way of meeting together and worshipping together. 
and praying together and supporting one another. That was a lot of information for you to take in. Uh, if there is any questions that you've got about this, I might not have the answers yet, but please feel free to, to put questions through, through Facebook or through my email address. After our service, we're going to have coffee after church. You have to make your own coffee, drink it in your own place, wherever you are. You can drink something else if you like, uh, but join us in just a few minutes' time on Zoom. And if you would like the details for how to join, please again put a comment here or contact me through Messenger or through my email address and we can let you have the details to join us. Um, Anthea, have I forgotten anything else that I was supposed to share with people? Shaking her head. Um, it was Anthea's birthday yesterday. We've been celebrating, we've been glamping in the garden. Really recommend Home Adventures, a local metal business who are um, renting out bell tents where you can glamp in them or you can set it up for a, a home cinema experience for your kids or for adults as well. I would enjoy a home cinema experience too. Really great and a bit different to do uh, while we can't very easily go away anywhere to do something special. Uh, so happy birthday to Anthea and happy birthday to anyone else who's just had a birthday. I think that there's quite a few birthdays in June but people don't always tell me about them because they don't like me to embarrass them when singing. I promised Anthea I wouldn't sing to her, so um, I'll sing to her later when we're, not, when we're not on camera. But we are going to sing our next hymn. This one is just some good fun. Uh, I, now let me just make sure I've got this right. Right way round. Just a thank you to the people who have helped in the church. Yeah, Peter's quite right. I can just see this comment now. A lot of people are doing a lot of work in St Oswald's Churchyard. Thank you for reminding me to say that. Uh, it looks so much better now than it did a couple of weeks ago. Thank you very much. The weather's not been very kind to us while we've been trying to clear it. So a big thank you. And a big thank you to those working in St John's Churchyard as well, which is also looking wonderful. Uh, and the groundskeepers from Alton Hall help us there, uh, along with other volunteers and our gardener to try and keep on top of what is a huge churchyard. So thank you. Going to sing, Oh When the Saints Go Marching In. Now, this is one of those hymns where there's no real set verses to it. You can make up your own if you like. Um, I've gone with a combination of verses from different places. If you want to do some clapping on the offbeat at home, if you want to dance around, if you've got your trumpet <laughs> your clarinet you want to join in please do we like to uh, very briefly just annoy the neighbors with a bit of bit of worship together so we're going to sing oh, when the saints go marching in and i'm going to oops try and make sure that i sing the right words because there's so many versions of this apologize just find my music so many versions of this i sometimes um, sing one particular version without thinking about it. Okay. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, I want to be the number when the saints.
<laughs> we got there in the end and with mostly all of the right words. <laughs> see a couple of requests for the zoom coffee I will send that through in a moment um, Janet Haywood I can see you're requesting it I can send that through to you on messenger if that's all right final blessing for all of you today the Lord bless you and watch over you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord look kindly on you and give you peace and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Rest upon you and those whom you love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.